What's up guys, Z Farrell's back here with a Madden NFL 17 preview. You've got the top five players on the defensive side of the ball. We're gonna kick it off with defensive tackles. This came out earlier in the week. And Dominican Sue right there, but the number one guy is Aaron Donald, well-deserved. You'll notice the acceleration on Aaron Donald, which is kind of the benchmark at the defensive tackle position, is 90, 90 acceleration. Now in Ultimate Team, players like to put DNs at DT because there's plenty of guys with good speed, good excel but in the base game you can do that but it pays to have a really nice defensive tackle guys like Geno Atkins in the past 98 power move 98 block shed 94 strength this item right here this Aaron Donald he was an elite last year he's going to be more amazing this season really like what he brings to the table he's played well he earns this and he could potentially be your key blitz guy on the defense now Geno Atkins comes in at number two he's 94 overall Good power move, never really had the strength of the block shed, and he's gone down athletically over time, so he's not quite where he was. Still great, but not quite where he was at. Fletcher Cox gives you not as much strength in block shed, but does have the good uh, power move in the rush game. Sue gives you more of the strength, a little less of the block shed. I think they might have knocked him down a little bit, but he does have still have pretty good power move, and you see where his ratings are for speed and excel compared to Aaron Donald. He's the benchmark. Uh, Kawan Short, who had a nice game in the Super Bowl, 70 speed, 85 excel, pretty nice with 95 power move, not as strong, but pretty good block shed for that point in the uh, in the list. So we got to really like the defensive tackle position. Madden 17, guys, remember, uh, defenders on the defensive line, I think it's the first time ever that they have had two gap assignments for defensive tackle. So this is going to be a key position on your defense. You know, we love the guys that have good strength, good block shed. You can find some inexpensive ways in Ultimate Team to get those guys, the Steven Piaz of the world. But now with the different assignments, is it going to be more key? Is it going to be less key? It's something we're going to have to look at and figure out. Now, joining these guys on the defensive line, you have the top five defensive ends. You see right here a new face in a new city, Olivier Vernon. But J.J. Watt gets the first overall 99 on the defensive side of the ball that we've seen. I mean, he's basically a defensive tackle that's playing defensive end. He does it all. You could put him anywhere and be set. 98 block shed, 99 power move. Mixed with 92 finesse move. This is what I want to talk about with the defensive ends that are on this list. I think, I would have to go back and look, but I feel like they're more balanced. Obviously, we're looking at the best guys, and the best guys are going to tend to be more balanced. But these guys are really, really balanced. And... When you go for a more inexpensive option, you really only get one of these two power or finesse. And then we found out last year uh, on the Muttcast that these moves both will play from time to time. We used to really kind of think it was only the higher move, but that makes a guy like JJ White that much better that he has both moves at his disposal and the computer will actually trigger them, not just you rushing, user rushing. P.S. If you're user rushing, don't user rush user a linebacker. All right, Jarrell Casey comes in at number two. This is a guy we loved last season. And the defensive ends actually kind of took this approach this year. You see the, the great power move? 91 strength, 92 block shed. Graham's more of an athletic pass rusher than a, than a beef guy. But Daniels is an 88 strength, 93 block shed. And Vernon's more of a pass rusher. But those two guys in Ultimate Team, Daniels, Casey, Derek Wolf from the Broncos, um, formerly Mike DeVito of the Chiefs. Those guys are your strength block shed 3-4 beef ends. You've got your 4-3 pass rushing style. Uh, Watt does it all, but like Graham, a guy like Chandler Jones, he's who's now moved. I probably, um, we'll see what he does in Arizona for his position, but you know, you have guys in the 3-4, the outside linebackers are more the ends, where these guys are super, super valuable in ultimate team, so you want to keep an eye on the strength block shed style, 3-4 ends to get good run stuff. And then you want to keep an eye on more inexpensive outside linebackers, which we're going to go to next, because you might be able to find great value. I mean, Vaughn Miller's amazing across the board, 87 speed, he's our second 99 OVR on the defensive side of the ball. 98 finesse move, 92 power move. You see that mix, that balance that we talked about. You see it in those elite guys, very, very important. Justin Houston, 
great at setting the edge along with pretty good speed, 98 power move, and also has 91 finesse plus 93 block shed. That's going to help in the run game. Now, Khalil Mack gets a 94 overall. He actually commented, um, if you follow the EA uh, channel, the EA Twitter, he commented on his Madden rating. He said 94 is good, but he wants to be 99. And if you put this guy at D end, I don't know what his rating might go up to, but generally when you put an OLB down at DE, he can go up in overall. And I mean, Mac with 98 power move, 88 finesse, and 93 block shed, I feel like his technique moves beyond just his athleticism, which he's had in the past, are really starting to boost up because of him playing well. And he's looking good. Now, McPhee last year was our gold budget run stuffing end, uh, or outside linebacker. You put him out there, he's, he, blo he clogs the run game for you because of 92 strength, 94 block shed. I mean, that's better than some of the DEs we saw. But he's not going to be inexpensive this year because he's probably going to be an elite. And he's got some really good ratings that you can't really hide anymore. He was a little hidden before. I mean, he's pretty slow at 76 speed, but you use him for that role, you're going to see success. Hightower uh, is an outside linebacker at 83 speed. Good excel, good mix of everything with 87 play rec. Good pursuit, good power move, and it looks like the Patriots backers, they can all kind of mix it up and play different roles. So I do like the Patriots. You know they run the 3-3-5. They've got Chris Long this year. they got Pop Roast, I believe. Um, Jabal Shear should be pretty good. So the Patriots up front looking pretty strong. Now in the middle linebacker position, these guys complement those players. Luke Keefe gets the third 99 overall of the defensive side of the ball right here to join Von Miller and J.J. Watt. 98 play rec, 98 pursuit, with 89 zone coverage. Guys, new zone coverages this year, very good. The run game, it looks like it's gonna rely on play rec. You're gonna have defenders kind of in their assignments, and then they're gonna have to choose to fill the gap. When they go to fill the gap, we'll have to see if that's based on the play rec, if it's based on if you run commit, if it's based on, we don't know exactly what, but I know Luke Keekly for me, in the last two years of Madden has played amazing as a CPU player and I gotta believe in some of these ratings that factor in beyond just the speed and beyond the amazing zone coverage. 93 block shed at MLB, fantastic. Now Brandon Marshall comes in, he had great zone coverage last year in Ultimate Team. He's a guy we use so keep an eye on him. He's gonna be an elite most likely so he won't be super inexpensive but he'll ramp up from that 81 all season potentially and I like what he brings to the table. I think he's a guy you keep an eye on. Um, I know they lost their other MLB, went to a different team, who also plays really well, Trevathan, I believe. But uh, he's another guy we might keep an eye on. I don't know where he'll, he'll end up on these lists. Uh, Derek Johnson, great zone coverage. Not the fastest anymore, but similar maybe to the Keekly. Less athletic at this point, but still going to make some great plays, it would seem. Um, and he goes along with some nice Chiefs LBs. Don't sleep on the Chiefs defense. Bobby Wagner's always been a speed guy. He'll make some plays for you. Going to have pretty good hit power, I would assume, coming across the middle. Uh, it seems like here they want to match him up with tight ends on the corner routes. Hopefully he can hang with those guys. Lastly, Jamie Collins, the pack, sneak another LB in here. 93 power move. So you got two guys that can rush the passer for the Patriots. You then have 85 speed, some good jump, and an athletic linebacker who you can do a lot with Hightower, a lot with Collins, mix them up, move them around. I like what the Patriots bring in that front seven. Now, we have the top five CBs also. So we've looked at the front. We get not another 99. We do not get another 99 here. So our 499s, it looks like are going to be Gronk. Vaughn, Luke, and JJ. So those are the 499s, looks like heading into the season. I don't have free safeties and strong safeties, but I can't imagine Earl Thomas, Cam Chancellor are gonna get a 99 uh, because at the CB position, 94 is as high as they go with Josh Norman. Um, and the note I made on Twitter was basically three of the five receivers had 93 speed. Only one of the top five has higher than 90 speed. Uh, Pat Pete gets you 93, and everyone else is either at just below 90, but nobody above 90 uh, with Norman. So Norman has a good balance and amazing, amazing zone coverage. 
We'll have to see if he locks it down the whole season, but he's going to always be a guy you can go to in zone coverage. He's a guy you look for uh, as the season starts. If you pull him, you're going to be pretty happy. And if you're using Washington, you should be pretty happy too. Now, Chris Harris can do both. He's more of a man coverage guy in my mind. He has really, really high agility, but not that high excel. you got to kind of figure out how this affects. Because his speed's pretty average for CBs at the, at the base game, but that excel could um, lack behind, but the agility could make up for it with man coverage. So that's a test we'll have to do and see. That's something to keep an eye on uh, with Chris Harris. Sherman comes in big. He's also got super high agility, but he's not as much of a man coverage guy. Going to be a little bit more of a zone cover guy. Plus, you get the height with the Sherman. So, he's still back here. Uh, and you can throw him out on an island. Hopefully, use that new SWAT to make some plays. Now, Pat Pete's my choice. He's the guy I want to see in my elites because he gives you the speed. He's balanced here. A great agility. And then, um, a fancy man coverage a little bit more, but he still has really good zone. Plus, he's 6'1". So, he's not 6'3". But he's a little faster, and uh, he flips man versus zone, where some people like zone man, I like man zone. Um, so Pat Pete's my guy. He's my pick. Uh, I think he'll be pretty good. Now, Revis, he doesn't have the agility, but he's a little bit more of a man guy. He does have the excel. So he's kind of the opposite of Chris Harris, where he has the excel, not the agility, and he's a little bit more man coverage uh, heavy, but still pretty good in zone. So Revis is pretty legit. And those are uh, my picks. Now, looking at this, you've got to consider the Denver Broncos defense right up there with Von Miller and Chris Harris. Probably the best defense in the game. Now, the Panthers, they lose Josh Norman, who was on the squad, but they keep Luke Keekley in the middle, and he saw Kawan Short's ratings. So, you know, they're up there, but I think their secondary is hurting a little bit. I do like them as, as a team, but I don't know if they're going to be end up being in the top five. I am going to put the Chiefs up there in the top five. Uh, I'll probably put the Raiders up there in the top five. Uh, New England is interesting. I think they're top seven, both offense and defense, but they, they're missing a couple key things. They're missing speed on offense, it looks like, and probably missing some speed on uh, in the secondary. You know, McCourty's always a guy I like, but they don't really have that lockdown guy yet. Malcolm Butler hasn't reflected his ratings yet. so. Patriots are, are definitely solid, but not, you know, super elite. You obviously like Arizona, I think, will bring um, some really nice ratings to the game on the defensive side of the ball with the Honey Badger, potentially. Uh, so, you know, Broncos, Cardinals, Seattle. We don't have the safeties ratings yet, but when we do, I'm expecting Seattle with Richard Sherman to continue their dominance uh, with Bobby Wagner in the middle. Uh, I like that a lot. That would be my probably my third team. And uh, defense with zone coverage can be pretty crazy this year. Plus the new run game, uh, run fits on the defensive side of the ball. Make sure you read those blogs, guys. That's it for the top five ratings for right now. Uh, make sure to subscribe to the channel because we'll be back. Um, and we'll also be live streaming. We also have the top five tight ends in the game, which I won't bore you with right now. But just look at this. Rob Gronkowski has 92 run block. 98 catching traffic. His strength is crazy. I mean, he's just a beast. 88 strength. He's the guy. He's Ben Hartsock, but a real receiver. And he gets the 99 OBR. So, Gronk crushing it. Uh, Greg Olson super solid across the board, but not the run blocker Gronk is, uh, but a little bit better route runner. Delaney Walker, very, very good run blocker, but doesn't have the spec of the catch in traffic of the Gronk or the size. Eifert, kind of a balance between all the categories of the first uh, two guys. And then lastly, Jimmy Graham, who has the spec of the catch in traffic, not the run block, uh, and not quite the route running. So all of these tight ends present something different. So you'd obviously probably want Gronk, uh, most of all, because he brings the most, but Depending on these guys, I bet Jordan Reed will have pretty good route running again. He had a good year last year if he's somewhere on this list, uh, you know, just below this list. And, um, you know, I don't know where Julius Thomas sits, but he'll be, he's always had pretty good route running and pretty good spec and catch in traffic. So there's a lot of tight ends, and those are a key point to many people's offense. I know when the game first comes out. So it's going to be pretty exciting. But 
Make sure to subscribe to the channel. Let me know in the comments who your top defenses are coming into the season now that you've seen the ratings. We'll get you an update next week with the safeties, and we'll talk a little bit more about Madden 17, guys. Uh, the pre-order page is up, so that's where I'll be. And I've been eyeing that new Xbox, the white one. That's the slim one, so I have to pick one of those up for the season. But until next time, this is Zifaro signing out. And with the defensive ratings now out, remember, lock up.